All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA task list series. Today we're continuing with C10, graph data to communicate relevant quantitative relations. All C10 is really asking you to do is to understand why we graph data and what type of graphs do we normally use. It's a very straightforward task list item. There's a reason it's towards the end of C. So as always, we're going to keep it very simple, keep it straight to the point, and cover just what you need to know. Don't get bogged down in the relevant quantitative relations. All it's saying is we're graphing data to communicate results to stakeholders and whoever else needs to know how our programs are going. So as always, check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, let's get going. All right, C10, graphing data is a quick way to interpret and communicate results. Your job as the analyst is to interpret those results. And how are you going to interpret graphed data? Well, through visual analysis. Visual analysis is the primary method of data analysis in ABA. Visual analysis is exactly what it sounds like. Take your data, put it on the graph, you look at that graph, and then you analyze the graph and you make decisions. Now, that's how we interpret the data. Graphing is very easy for stakeholders to interpret because almost anybody can look at a line graph and understand, is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Has there been a change across conditions? That's the beauty of graphs. That's the beauty of line graphs. They're very easy to interpret, even for naive and maybe untrained viewers. So we interpret our graphs, and then we communicate those results to relevant stakeholders. But data must be graphed for visual analysis. It's a requirement as an analyst for you as an analyst to graph your data. Now, most of us will be using automated systems, right, where data are graphed once they're put into your app or whatever you're using. And that's great. It makes your life so much easier but you still have to interpret those results. And you still have to communicate those results. So common graphs include line graphs, bar graphs, cumulative records, and scatter plots. Now, line graphs are really what you're going to be using 95% of the time. Most of what we use are line graphs. They're the most common form of graph in ABA, and for a good reason, right? Again, very quick way to interpret and communicate results. What you need to know, the x-axis represents the passage of time. So that could be minutes, days, hours, sessions. And there are different roles and ideas behind how you should graph your time. Uh, if your sessions are of different lengths, then sessions might not be the best way to go about it. You, you really want your time standardized. So hours might be a good way to do it. You want time standardized because your y-axis is going to represent your behavior. So you don't want your time being all over the place because then your behavior isn't really going to be accurate and it's not going to give you a good interpretation of what the results actually were. So again, x-axis, passage of time, y-axis, behavior. And then you connect your data points to make a data path. Simple as that. Bar graphs aren't often used in ABA, but they can replace individual points representing data. Uh, one of the most common uses I've seen is, let's say you have a, a staff preference assessment or a staff lunch, and you want to figure out who wants to eat what. So you offer pizza, uh, I don't know, salad or burgers, right? And then you poll everybody and you put them on a, a bar graph like this. And it's a quick way to see, okay, people like burgers this much, pizza this much, salad this much. This is just favorite color. I think you're all familiar with bar graphs. You're not going to use bar graphs a whole lot in ABA. Be familiar with, with what they do is they can replace individual points representing data. Now, continuing cumulative records. Cumulative records, of course, were popularized by B.F. Skinner when he was doing his uh, Skinner box experiments. And a cumulative record is an always increasing data path that indicates response rate. What's very important to note about cumulative record is they always increase. Cumulative records never go down. You can see on our image here, 
even when it's flat, it's never decreasing, right? If we go back to our line graph, it can go up, it can go down, it can trend. Cumulative records aren't like that. They indicate response rate. A flat response rate simply means no responses. They're total responses, right? So you start at zero, and by the time we get to the end of this cumulative record, we have over 300 responses. It's a cumulative record of responses. And then scatter plots. You might use scatter plots if you are trying to determine what time of day a behavior occurs most frequently. So you'll have your time of day and your behavior and they'll intersect and it's going to give you a good idea of when that behavior might occur. So that they distribute data across different points on these plots. It's a different way to view your data. Again, for most common graphs, you're going to be using a line graph almost all the time. Understand what the other three are. Scatter plots are good, again, when you want to distribute that data and interpret it a little differently. When you want to look at how time is relative to the behavior in a different light. A few last notes about graphs. The vertical axis is ideally two-thirds the length of the horizontal axis. This is for visual analysis purposes. So don't manipulate the length of your, your horizontal and vertical axes just to make your data fit, right? Two-thirds the length is the standard. Try to stick with that. Condition change lines are vertical lines that indicate a change in treatment or experimental procedure. So if we had a graph, right, and we had baseline, and then we had our data path, we would, might have a condition change line, right, for our intervention change. And it might be something like that, right? So that's our condition change line. They indicate a change in treatment or experimental procedure. They can be solid. They can be dashed, depending on the level of change. And then data paths connect data points, but do not cross between condition change lines. You can see, as we change condition, our data path stops and restarts. That's really it. I mean, graphing data to communicate relevant quantitative relations. Understand why we graph. Understand the necessity of graphing. Understand we use visual analysis. And understand how you're going to communicate these graphs to stakeholders. You're typically going to be using a line graph, but know why cumulative records exist. Know about bar graphs and know why scatter plots exist. Why do we use scatter plots? Pretty much as simple as that. We're going to finish up with C11. And then we're going to start diving into some of our more experimental design topics. So it's going to pick up a little bit. So finish this video, finish C11, two, I think, primers as we move towards experimental design, single subject design, which can be a little more complex. As always, when you pass your exam, let us know so we can put you in the Sunday shout out. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass let us know already said that other than that work hard study hard we'll see you soon